r slash no sleep posted by you slash peter underscore harrington as a child my father would lock me in a cage i now know why as a child i never understood why my father kept me in a cage i was raised in a rural community far away from any city my dad was an arborist and my mom left before i can remember for the most part i spent my childhood isolated from other children we would go to church sometimes but rarely interacted with other community members. My dad hunted, and we mostly ate venison, waterfowl, and sometimes bear. Our house was a small shack deep in the mountains, so our human contact was minimal. Next to the side of the house was the opening to a cellar. What was down there still haunts me to this day. Once a month, my father would strip me naked and drag me downstairs to the basement. When I was young, I cooperated with his demands, but I became more defiant as I aged. No, Dad, you're not going to take me down there. I kicked and screamed. On occasion, I bit and scratched at him, making him bleed profusely. All the while, he stared forward and kept marching. The cellar itself was dark and cramped. He would throw me and unlock a door behind me. In the corner was an animal cage about 6 feet tall with a 5 foot by 4 foot base. In the dark, I could make out what looked like bones scattered across the floor of the cellar. I banged on the cage and begged him to let me free. This is for your own good, he often said. He never made eye contact with me on these occasions. He simply locked me in my cage, walked up the stairs, and shut the cellar door leaving me in darkness. The light that entered the room was so faint that even when my eyes had adjusted to the dark, I still could not make up the contents of the room. Those nights were horrid. At first, I felt a mild sensation of hunger which soon turned into ravenousness. My mind would then lose the sense of physical language and turn into nothing but primal feelings. Anger aggression, and a predatory sense of vengeance consumed me, and my mind became numb to anything resembling the human intellect. Lastly, I recall the bodily contortions. My bones felt as if they were being stretched by an external force. Every single inch of my being ached. I was always able to briefly endure the pain until the external force became too much, and I was reduced to spasms on the floor. My limbs soon took on a mind of their own until I could no longer control my body. After this, I could recall nothing except a numbing neural force that reduced my conciseness to nothing but void. And then, nothing. The following morning, my father would come down and awaken me. He woke me up the same way every time, gently nudging me until I regained consciousness. I always found myself draped in a warm quilt and a pillow to rest my head. It's over, he often said, you can finally rest. As he led me out of the cage and into the light of day, I always recall more bones in the basement than the night before. This monthly cycle continued for years, and we barely mentioned these occurrences in our daily life. If I ever brought up the subject, his mood would suddenly change from his typically calm demeanor to one of extreme anger. Never ask me about that. His face would turn red during these outbursts. We don't talk about that. Do you understand? It was the elephant in the room that never left. Under each conversation, we both knew that the other had it on the brain. Yet, I soon learned it would be unfruitful if it ever reached the surface. Years passed, and I soon decided that I had reached my limit with this abuse every month. I began tracking the nights where he would take me down to the cellar, and I learned that this occurred every 27 days. On the 26th day since my last caging, I ran away from home a few days before my 18th birthday. I woke up at 3.30 am with my bags already packed. I knew that if I cut straight through the woods, I could walk east until I reached the town. By the time I got to the town, I would be 18 years of age and I would catch the nearest bus and leave my father forever. I got out my compass and made my way east. The woods were still dark that early in the morning, but I knew it would give me a several hour head start for my father, who woke up at 6 o'clock sharp. I knew that if I didn't go in a perfectly straight line, there was a road that went north that I would come across, and I could follow that to town. I also could hitch a ride with one of the truckers on that road and drive my way to freedom. The sun rose, and soon my path was lit before me. The shrubbery was thick, and I often found myself crawling under bushes and cutting my way through wide spots. While the landscape was difficult to traverse, I had an easy time walking in the correct direction. The sun began to set, and I felt a sense of dread. This was the first time I would not have been caged during those painful sensations. I then wondered if my father had indeed been looking out for me when he locked me up. You idiot, I said to myself. I covered my face and screamed. I had no idea what happened during those nights because I was unconscious during most of them. Perhaps dad was only doing what was best for me. How could you be so stupid? I punched a nearby tree and stomped my foot in anger. 
It occurred to me that if I hurried, maybe I could make it back in time. Most of my path was clear, and I thought Dad could have been following me, and he would know what to do. I turned around and started running in the opposite direction as fast as I could. I was already well worn out from the day's hike, but I knew I needed to push forward. I had no idea what damage my blind stupidity could cause. The light of the sky grew dim, and soon it was night. I collapsed on the ground, completely out of breath. Just keep pushing, I said. I stood up and tried to continue forward slowly until I was all out of energy. I rested my head on the ground and looked up at the sky above. Through the trees, I could see a clear night sky. The moon came into view, looking fuller than I had ever seen it before. It was a complete circle. I gulped as a deep force within my brain came to the surface. I realized that I was starting to lose all sensation of thought and that my mind was turning primal. Stop that, I said. But my mind was overcome with primal emotion. Soon my limbs began to ache, and I started to lose control of my body. I tried to scream, but what came out sounded more like the howl of a dog. The void kept forward in my mind, and the blackness overwhelmed me. Once again, nothing. I woke suddenly as if I had been dragged out of the deepest trench in the ocean. In front of me was a bloody corpse of a man. My arms clawed at the man and brought his flesh to my mouth. I tried to stop it, but it was impossible. There was another force controlling me. I was a helpless observer to my body. But I realized that my body didn't look like my body at all. My hands weren't hands, but claws. I was a creature covered in blood and hair. The claws before me grabbed more of the man's flesh and brought it to my mouth. I could taste the blood. I could smell my pretty. And when my eyes darted to the man's face, I realized who it was. My father was there on the ground, grasping for any sort of life he could muster. Though I couldn't form coherent thoughts, the small part of my remaining intellect could make out my father's words. Son, he said, I tried to protect you. But now you have tasted human flesh. He coughed up blood as the monster controlling me continued to mutilate him. Now that you have tasted blood, you can no longer sleep. I saw a claw slash his throat and the life drain from my father's eyes. He was dead, and there was nothing I could do but watch as my father turned from a corpse to a pile of blood and bones. When there was nothing left of my father, the creature controlling me ran off into the night, howling and screeching. We ran, darting up the side of the nearest mountains. When we reached the summit, the creature controlling me let out an immense howl. The rest of the night was a blur, I hunted prey and ran around the woods against my will. A relief came across me when I saw the first light of dawn. As the sky became lighter and lighter, I regained agency and could soon think coherently again. I looked down and saw the monstrous claws return to my human hands. The primal emotions began to fade, and I was quickly able to control myself again. Without thinking, I collapsed to the floor and began to cry. I cried for hours, naked on the ground of the forest. It was noon before I could stand up and try to find my way back to our little shack in the woods. It took me several days, but I eventually returned home. I opened the cellar and, for the first time, brought a flashlight with me. I looked around and realized that the bones on the floor were animal bones. My father had fed me live animals to quench my hunger as the wolf. He wanted me never to taste human blood. Now that I have tasted the flesh of man, I cannot sleep. I cannot forget what it is like to be a wolf. Now I live alone in the wilderness, even farther away than where my father and I resided. I have broken into a house in the wilderness with an internet connection where I am able to share my tale with you. I hunt for what I need as a human and hunt for what I need as a wolf. Years have passed, and despite my best efforts, I have killed men and women. Those who choose to venture out into the wild are often unlucky when I am waiting for them. Their screams are so horrifying that I wish I could just sleep them away and forget. But I can never forget because I have now tasted the blood of man.